Hi there and welcome to the Met Office forecast for the week ahead. It's all about the temperature range this week, both the diurnal temperature range, that's the difference between the day and night, and the geographical temperature range as well, as various weather systems control our weather. At the moment, high pressure in charge, but a powerful jet stream is to the northwest of the UK, and that's going to send this low into Iceland. And that low is going to produce some very strong winds indeed for Iceland. The UK not immune. The northern half of the UK will experience increasing wind speeds through Tuesday with wind gusts of in excess of 50 miles an hour, even 60 miles an hour in parts of northern Scotland. Fairly blustery on Tuesday as well for northern England and Northern Ireland, particularly around the higher parts of these areas. But further south, it's a calm and frosty start to Tuesday, widely minus one to minus three Celsius in the south. And in some of the colder spots, such as Benson in Oxfordshire, temperatures could dip below minus five degrees. There'll be a few fog patches as well, particularly towards the southeast, but they'll disappear mid-morning. And then a beautiful spring sunny day once again for much of England and Wales, with temperatures responding well as a result. Further north, though, as I mentioned, it's going to be a blustery day. Gales around the north and northwest of Scotland, and then it turns increasingly wet as a weather front dangling from that low that's affecting Iceland moves in later Tuesday. The start of Wednesday brings mild air into the north of the UK, but again, frost and fog around, particularly for southern England, parts of South Wales. More widespread dense fog, I suspect, Wednesday morning, but it will disappear around the middle of the morning. And then again, sunny skies and light winds feeling very pleasant with the increasing spring sunshine. 13, 14 degrees, a little warmer compared with Tuesday, but not so pleasant further north where that rainfall continues to mount up. And this is the total rainfall for the three-day period of Tuesday to Thursday. We're talking about northwest Scotland seeing the highest totals, particularly the northwest highlands, 50 or even higher millimetres here, 80 perhaps in places there's a risk of 100 millimetres. So that's something we'll keep an eye on. But some rain also for Northern Ireland, southwest Scotland, northwest England, and then later on into parts of West Wales. You can see, though, by the white colours there, central and southeastern parts of England are generally staying dry through this whole period. Now into the start of Wednesday, we're going to see a reorientation of the weather pattern as high pressure moves into the continent and we see more of a southwesterly flow. That's eventually going to push the weather front away from northwest Scotland, but it's also going to introduce a milder airflow across the whole of the UK. So frost and fog more isolated across southern areas, although it will be a foggy start once again for southern counties of England. Less frost. Still a chilly start in places, but plenty of sunshine for England and Wales throughout Thursday. So several days on the trot for some parts of England and Wales of sunny skies. But for Scotland and Northern Ireland, once again, a lot of cloud. The rain easing off and becoming confined to the far north and northwest. And this weather front then starts to move into western parts and then eventually central areas through Thursday. Ahead of it, we're drawing up a plume of warmth, and that's why temperatures on Thursday could reach 15 or 16 Celsius in parts of eastern England. And again on Friday, it's going to be fairly mild, but with a lot more cloud across England and Wales and some outbreaks of showery rain moving through, it's not going to feel quite as warm. Scotland and Northern Ireland into fresher air, but also sunnier skies, and so a marked contrast compared with the previous three days of persistent rain, although there will be some showers coming into the northwest of Scotland. So a much brighter day in the north, cloudier skies for England and Wales with showery rain. And then as we head into the weekend, we're going to see the weather become a little stuck in a rut as this area of low pressure drops away from the jet stream and becomes stationary to the southwest of the UK. For much of the country, that means a relatively dry and bright southeasterly airflow with dry air coming from the continent. But towards the south and southwest, there's always the chance that this low will churn up some showery rain and a chance through Saturday and Sunday that that showery rain will push further north at times as well. Some uncertainty about that aspect of the forecast. But the low is tending to sit to the southwest, and this is the most likely weather pattern on Sunday the 9th of March, so a continuation of Saturday's weather. At first, the weekend's going to be relatively mild, but into the start of next week, there are now some suggestions from the computer model output that there's a chance of a northerly cold airflow developing. This shows the temperature anomaly compared with the average for the time of year, and it shows temperatures several degrees below average if this 
particular weather pattern comes into play. And uh, there's a 31 percent chance of this, according to the latest model out. But it's still quite far away. So at this point, we're looking at lots and lots of computer model simulations. They don't all agree. A third of them suggest this. Others suggest something slightly different. For example, a continuation of what we're seeing through Saturday and Sunday with low high pressure or oh, low pressure, I should say, to the southwest and this easterly airflow, or something a bit more generally higher pressure and closer to average as far as the temperatures are concerned. So still a lot of uncertainty for the start of next week, but there is that chance that temperatures will drop off significantly after the much milder air that we're going to experience later this week. We'll keep you updated on all of that over the next few days with the 10-day trend and the deep dive. We'll have those uploaded to YouTube as usual.